And we are now inside of 30 seconds to go. Inside of 30 seconds to go. This is it for all the Marvel Sea Otter. Riders, go! You are underway! <laughs> So I have followed Toby as far as I could. I'm behind Pete for a second here. I'm looking around and I'm starting to see some pretty big names. I'm behind Lachlan Morton. We're going into the first turn. The first turn is a big U-turn. Actually two U-turns on dirt. So I kind of drift to the outside because I don't want to end up pinched on the inside. I can see Russell Finsterwald, Howard Grotz. I'm looking around like, all right, these are some pretty big names. But then it's chaos, obviously. You go from a really wide road to a really narrow road and chaos happens. This guy's off his bike. That's Jeff Kabush. Tobjorn, who I was just behind, is riding through the grass. Very fitting for his green jersey to be in the grass. I hesitate a little bit here. I should have passed a couple more riders on this little stretch before the single track. are going downhill and we are barely moving this is what happens when traffic gets backed up I watch these couple guys in front of me getting air doing some wheelies something about just putting dudes on mountain bikes that makes us want to get rad and get skeezy you know um, I guess that's the mountain bike way you gotta drift and get air and have fun This first downhill is the most technical. I say that in air quotes because it's not really that technical. It's just kind of bumpy. I was on a hardtail and I thought it was totally fine. On a hardtail, you just have to be a little bit smarter about your line choice so that you're not just smacking your 
back wheel on any hard surfaces. I didn't want to flat, so just being safe. But, I mean, it's wide open. We are flying right now. We are moving at a pretty quick pace. The course wasn't as technical as I was expecting. I was expecting to come all the way out to the west coast and for there to be big rocks and big drops and just scary stuff. I was definitely a little nervous about the hardtail no dropper post setup. But after pre-riding the course the day before the race, I felt pretty good about it. There wasn't any gnarly drops and sketchy descents where I was at a huge disadvantage. So I felt pretty good about it. In fact, when me and Dylan were pre-riding, he thought for sure that he was gonna drop me on this downhill and I was able to hold his wheel without any problems whatsoever. And he said he was pretty surprised that I still had those mountain bike skills from all those years ago. And it was good to hear him say that and it boosted my confidence before the race because I was definitely a little nervous that it had been so long since my last mountain bike race. the race I'm sitting right around 30th place kind of nowhere near the front of this race of course you want to try to stay with the leaders as long as possible in most race scenarios but with this being my first mountain bike race in years this was not one of the goals I had for this race I didn't expect to be in the lead group even from the get-go of this race and so I'm not surprised that I'm this far back and not in that lead group but in other races where more gravel focused, more not mountain bike focused, uh, I would be trying to stay with that lead group and hang there as long as possible. But for this one, the goals were a little different. And so I'm sitting kind of where I had expected. I definitely want to move up a little bit and get into a little bit of a faster group.
All right, we're about 15 miles into the race. We've gone through the first feed zone. After that feed zone is a pretty long paved climb in which I put in a pretty big effort to catch up to this group of five or six riders. Carter Anderson, the guy right in front of me, Kyle Trudeau, another lifetime VP athlete, Michael Vandenham, infamous Canadian cyclocross legend. Um, so I'm in this group, we're going pretty good. But to get to this group, I had to put in a pretty big effort. My heart rate was up into the 190s on that paved climb. So I'm knowing I'm going too hard and that there's a whole nother lap. We're only 15 miles into a nearly 70 mile mountain bike race and I'm already hitting heart rates in the 190s. So I know this is not a good strategy, but you get into that group, you're feeling good with that group. The group is moving fast. So you kind of just get caught up in the moment and end up doing making poor decisions for the longevity of the entire race and so that's where I am at this point I know I'm going too hard but the group is going good and so I'm just gonna keep it going Now seems like a good time to explain my nutrition strategy for the Sea Otter Classic. The Sea Otter is two 33 mile laps. There was a feed zone at the 12 mile point on each lap and that's where I had my pit crew there with my bottles. And so I started the, the race with one bottle with carbs in it, flow formulas, three scoops, 90 grams. And then when I got to the first aid, I grabbed another bottle with a bigger bottle with four scoops in it. That's about 120 grams of carbs in that bottle. And then throughout that entire lap, I didn't have another feed until the 12 point, the 12 mile point on lap two. So I had to go a whole lap before I got more water. So in hindsight, I wish I had had another bottle given to me through the start finish at the halfway point. but. You know, you live and you learn. And then at that second aid, I grabbed my last two bottles, one big bottle with flow, 100, again, 120, 150 grams of carbs, a bottle of water. I also had a flask of gel mix throughout this race as well that had about 150 grams of carbs. I'm starting to feel the pace a little bit, so I am just chilling at the back of this group, and I'm okay with that. We hit this pretty sketchy turn, I'm not going to lie, with some uh, road furniture, if you want to call it. Don't want to hit a sign in the middle of the race. That would be bad. And then we hit this really sandy section, and there's not really a good line. There is kind of a burned-in line, but really, you just want to try to avoid the really thick sand. And there are sections where you just have to ride through thick sand, so you're losing momentum, having to put out a bunch of power. Uh, I'm definitely hurting at this point, but I definitely want to stay in this group for as long as possible. So I'm trying to pick the best line that I can to avoid the sand and save as much energy as possible, but it's pretty inevitable that you're going to hit some thick stuff.
All right, I want to pull up my power numbers for lap one just to give you an idea of how hard we were going. About two, a little over two hours, max heart rate 194, average heart rate 180. We were cooking. Uh, the biggest thing I want to point out in this race, biggest learning lesson for me was how hard I went lap one. Average miles per hour was about two miles per hour different from lap one versus lap two, and my average heart rate dropped significantly, meaning I just wasn't able to push myself as hard as I should have that second lap, causing me to lose a lot of time. To give you an idea, at the end of lap one, I could see Dylan right ahead of me, probably 20 seconds up the road. And by the end of lap two, he ended up beating me by eight plus minutes so he basically put over eight minutes into me just on lap two that's how poorly i paced this race
All right, we have rolled through the racetrack and we're on lap two. I am in this group of a lot of young kids, a lot of U23 riders, a couple that I know from Cyclocross, Bear Devo, and Flow Formulas have a lot of U23 riders on the team. And you can just see these guys are blowing up. The guy in pink was attacking on lap one and now he can barely move. I'm convinced that old man strength is a real thing and these kids just don't got it. So that's the end of the story because my GoPro ended up falling off of my handlebars. Luckily, I was able to save it and throw it at the next aid stop. Thanks to this guy for going and finding it for me. Appreciate that. And again, thanks to all my sponsors. I ended up placing 30th, which is not so bad. Currently, I'm sitting 22nd in the Lifetime Series. Granted, I'm not in the series, but if I were, I'd be 22nd right now. And of course, Dylan is 17. Thanks for watching. See you guys in the next one.